Shalom, and that means peace, my brothers and sisters. Today, I bring you a very important message from Yahuwah. And the title of this video is Negroes slash Blacks scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. God has a message for you and the world do not want you to hear God's message. You see, my brothers and sisters, we are in the last days and we can see Acts chapter 2 and Joel chapter 2 being fulfilled for our sons and daughters are prophesying in these last days. You see, we are in the seventh day from Adam, which is the 12,000 year from creation. And what God has shown unto me, we are in the 7,485th year. When you convert that to Beta Israel time, you get 7,088 years. And when you convert it to the Jewish people time, you get 5,777 years. For they do not believe in the Messiah. This is why they are short 2,000 years. Now, to understand these end time prophecies, you need to read 2 Esther chapter 6 and chapter 7. For we know, according to the word, that a thousand years is a day unto Yahuwah. So, this is why we are in the seventh thousand year, because we are in the seventh day of Adam. Read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, and Psalms chapter 90, verse 4. And the links to 2 Ezra chapter 6 and chapter 7 will be in the video description box. So for you to read further, as well as 2 Ezra chapter 13. Other scriptures that you need to read to understand the message that God's messenger is speaking are... Deuteronomy chapter 33, Genesis chapter 49, Isaiah chapter 11, Revelations chapter 12, and Jeremiah chapter 30. Also in the video description box, Yahuwah had also spoken through another messenger. And that second message of his is for everyone. However, Negroes or Blacks, that message, message one in this video is only for you. But the second message is for everyone. The second message link will be placed in the video description box, as well as in this video, look to the right hand corner to access it. Also, there's a playlist video for you to also watch to get more understanding of the message of what God is saying. And again, check the video description box for other important message. And after you hear his messenger speak, stay tuned for some more important information that will follow after God's message. Now for God's message. Yahuwah is speaking. Hi, good afternoon. Um, let me begin this video by introducing myself to you. My name is Carla. And I am from the islands of Trinidad and Tobago. I live on Trinidad. Anyway, um, this is my first time ever doing a YouTube video. I have never done this before. It is not me to do videos. But however, I have been led to do this video by the Most High. Um, what happened is that he gave to me a prophecy, a word that, well, it kind of came about through, over a period of time, through much study and much prayer, and so he instructed me to write these words out, to put it out there, and also to do the video with me actually speaking the words. So, um, I published it, I believe it was about two weeks ago, it is now on my blog, Remnant Ones, Children of Light. I will put a link below this video so that you can access it if you wish. I've also done a PDF file of the wood. So, you know, for easy access, you can print if you want. Um, I would also say that since publishing the wood, I have attempted 
on several occasions to do this video, but every time I attempted to do it, I had problems. Problem after problem, so much so I decided to not bother. But a um, couple nights ago he impressed upon me again that I need to do this video, and so I need, I know that I need to do this, you know, it's, it's just, it's like every obstacle, every hindrance, every everything, it's just preventing me from doing this video. So as I said, here I am, yet again, trying to get it out there. So I pray that as I read, well, before I say that, let me just also say that the title to the word is An Awakening Call. And so obviously by the name, it suggests therefore that it is sent to awaken you, whoever you may be out there in whatever part of the world you're in. Um, so I pray that as you listen to my reading, that your spiritual ears would be open to hear what he is saying. I pray that you would discern what he is saying and I also pray that you would understand and glean what he is communicating to you through these words. Alright, so without further ado, let me read. It starts with an introduction and then I will get into the word. And so this is the introduction. I speak forth this word under the instruction of the Most High Elohim, whose name is yod heh vav -He, El of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, El of Israel. He has instructed me to speak and to write these words. These words are directed to his people Israel, natural born, descendants of all twelve tribes scattered in foreign lands throughout the four corners of the earth. I say natural born because it is you he has specifically told me to address. Though you are unaware of your true identity and nationality, he will reveal it to you. Uh, yet he has already, for you know who you are in your hearts. You are the seed of Israel. Bear in mind, this awakening call is not for a church, religious organization, denomination or a movement but it is for a nation of people. These words will vex, anger and offend many of you who will hear and read them. He has already warned me of this. Nevertheless, I am instructed to speak fearlessly and boldly what he has shown me. And so this is the word now. Thus says yod -He vav -He Elohim to the twelve tribes of Israel scattered abroad. Wake up! Arise, for it is time. It is time you know who you are. Though I have caused the memory of you as a nation to cease and your identity to be blotted out and erased from mankind, yet am I awakening you, for it is time. It is time you know and understand who you are, what your forefathers did that caused your exile into the nations how they disobeyed my laws, statutes, and commandments, how they angered me, sinned against me, defiling themselves and the land I gave to them as an inheritance, how they profaned my name and worshipped idols made of stone and wood, gods I never showed them, how they bowed their knees to them, sacrificed their sons to them, shedding the blood of my innocent ones. They provoked me to anger. They moved me to jealousy. So I removed them from the land of their inheritance, the land of promise. I scattered them into the nations among the Gentiles in the four corners of the earth where you dwell. You got there by ships. You got there by way of the seas. East, west, north, south. I have scattered you as I said I would. I have cursed you as I said I would. Because your fathers did not obey my commands, they chose curses and death over blessings and life. Neither do you obey. It is time you know and understand these things that I have done and repent. Repent for your fathers, repent for yourselves. Here is my testimony against your fathers. 
my witness I have preserved for you. A song I told my servant Moses to write and teach your fathers. Though you were in their loins, yet you heard. A song for them, a song for you. So that you would know what they did and understand what I have done. They broke covenant with me, although I was their rock, their husband, their maker. They moved me to jealousy with their idols. So do I move you to jealousy with a people, not a people. A people I have concealed, yet revealed. They are hidden and covered over, like the moon hides the sun in an eclipse. A people whom I have caused to believe are you, though they are not. As they are of another house, another tent, another nation. So as to make you jealous, like your fathers made me jealous. Therefore have I put them in your place and in your land. I have allowed them to dwell in your tents. Yes, know that it is I who has done this thing, as I said I would. To make you jealous, like I told my servant Moses to write in the song. So that you would know, so that you would understand. Yet will I give to this people peace and blessings, as I have promised. Though among them are those of the synagogue of Satan, whom I will destroy. I am provoking you to anger, just as your fathers did to me with their vain, empty, foolish idols. I am provoking you with a foolish people, people of the nations, Gentiles. For they have angered you, and they do anger you. Yet have I given them an opportunity to turn to me, to be my people as you are to walk in obedience to my laws, statutes, and commandments, because your falling away has opened the door of salvation to them. But the time has come for your restoration, for you to return to me, and for me to receive you unto myself as my people. For in your restoration is the fullness of the earth, the realignment of the cosmos and the universe, it is life from the dead. Have you not heard that all creation groans and travails for your manifestation as a nation, a people? Do you not know these things? It is time to come forth, O Israel. It is time for your birth. Repent and return to me. Return to my Torah, my instructions, my commandments. Pray towards the land and the city from whence you came and I would restore unto you all that I have promised, when I shall bring you back into your own land, the land of your inheritance, which I gave to your fathers. Then will you know that I have performed what I have spoken, not for your sakes, but for my holy name's sake, and for the sake of the covenant I made with my servant Abraham. Wake up, repent, and prepare, for my kingdom draws near. And so that is the word. I will give you a couple of scriptures that you can read where the word, you know, where he spoke to me from to put, you know, these words together. And the Song of Moses, you can find that in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 16 through 30. Continuing on in Deuteronomy 32, verses 1 through 47. You could also read Genesis 10. 1 through 3, and Genesis 9, verse 27, Romans 10, 19, and then 11, verses 1 through 15, and then 2 Chronicles, chapter 6, verses 36 to 39, and yeah, that's, that's about it, you can, you can read those, and um, I pray, like I said, that you would glean what he has been saying through or what he is saying to you through this word um, like I said this is my first video probably might be my last because again I don't do this unless he leads me to do another one then I will so thanks for listening thanks for your time and shalom shalom bye 
thank you for taking the time to listen to Yahuwah speaking through his messenger. I don't know about you, but that message brought tears to my eyes as well as comfort. And I know right now you're sitting in a state of being surprised, you know, at this message. But it is true. So as you are meditating on Yahuwah's message, when you study history, you will learn that they gave us many bywords and proverbs, such as evils, then to Hebrews, then to Negroes, even they were called niggers, even to black. Now in the Western Hemisphere, in North America, they call us African Americans. But in other countries, they may call you black Japanese, black Chinese, black German, or black Russian, or a black Russian, and etc. depending on the country that you're living in. You see, my brothers and sisters, we was once a nation of people without an identity because of the curses that are written in Deuteronomy chapter 8. But now Yahuwah has awakened you, my brothers and sisters. So you now have a purpose, an identity, a country, a, in, a sorry, a inheritance. And most importantly, you have an L. And he is the L of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Israel, he is the El of your forefathers, Yahuwah. So the first site I want to take you to will show you historical proof that we are the children of Israel and that we are Hebrew Israelites. Now, the site that, that I'm taking you to does not mean I agree with everything on this website I'm only using it to show you historical references. Again, anything that somebody is giving to you, you need to take the time and do your own research to make sure those things are correct. On this website called Is It Right Living, he has a great page to show you books that you can access to get the proof that you need. Now, most of you will already accept the truth because of the word, but I know some of you want more confirmation. So one of the books that's most often used is the Zondering Compact Bible Dictionary. And there you will find the biblical proof that the Negroes are the descendants of, of Shem, okay? And when you do further study, you will learn we are the children of Israel. Take this time to pause your screen to read that to read the Zonovan um, Bible Compact Dictionary definition on who we are. For we are not classified as the children of Ham. Okay, the Negroes are not classified as the children of Ham. Okay. Now for the next book that was on his site, this is another one called From Babylon to Timbuktu, A History of Ancient Black Races, Including the Black Hebrews, Rudolph R. Windsor, designed by L. Hag Gut. I'm, so, I'm sorry, my tongue about to mispronounce that name, but the last name is spelled is H-A-G-A-H-N. Now, this will let you know, Hebrew Israelites are black, so we don't call ourselves black. Again, when, we, when people are saying black Hebrew Israelites, what they are saying to you that they don't believe that you are a Israelite because you are black. So oftentimes they will label you as black Hebrew Israelites. But when you read the Bible, you will learn that Adam was black, Moses was black, Miriam was black, Jacob was black. So when you Read the word for yourself. You will learn that originally the Israelites are black. Now, today, the Gentile call the Israelites Jews. But actually, the correct word for Jews should have been Judean when you do research on these words. 
for the word Jew didn't come about until the 18th century, which was which was in the 1700s. The original word in the Bible was Judean, but they took that out. Okay, so when you do your research on that. So this is another good book right here. Now, there's also ancient maps of Africa that would show you that the children of Israel did flee into Africa when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. Um, let me see what I can find. One of these maps can be found in the earth and its, and its, and its inhabitants, Africa, volume 3, 1892. And this is by a French geographer, okay, who spent many years among the West African tribes. And um, there he probably found out that we are the children of Israel. Now, the area that you see highlighted here is dealing with the kingdom of Judah. Often they would call it Wenda, W-H-I-D-A-H. And you below that word, it says slave coast, okay, so on this um, part of the map of Africa, that's one of the um, countries or cities um, that would show proof to you that the children of Israel did flee into Africa after 70 AD. Okay. Another book to look at. Okay. This is again the picture of the earth and its inhabitants. You can take your time now to pause the screen. Now, below, below this book, it says, while comparing the Mandingo tribes with other Israelite tribes dwelling in West African, on page 175, where clues says they have been compared to the Sarakolis, the Jews of the West Africa. On page 267, talking about the tribes living in the Dahomo, da, I'm sorry, living in the Dahomey region of West Africa, he writes. East of Great Popo begins the the Dahomey territory guided by the important town of Gliwi, known to Europeans by the by the various names of of Fida, Hivida, Wenda, or Wedda. The old writers call it Judah and its inhabitants were said to be Jews. So when you get a hold of his book, which is again, the inhabitants, I mean the earth and, and its inhabitants, Africa by E. I cannot pronounce that name, forgive my tongue, but I can't pronounce the last name, Recluse. Okay, so that would prove to you that a lot of my people did flee into Africa after the 70 AD destructions. Another popular book is Ebos. I can't make out that second line. Okay, now I can. Includes over 25 percent African Americans, Hebrew exiles from Israel. Amazing facts and revelation by Professor O. Alezi. Okay. So that's another good book you definitely want to look at. It says here, the majority of slaves that were brought to the, to the shore of North America are in fact from the Igbo or Ig, Ig, I'm sorry, Igbo tribe. Please forgive my tone. The respected Nigerian author and professor, I, I ain't going to try to pronounce his name. Take this time now to pause your screen to get his name. Author and professor in his book, Igbo's. Hebrews Exile from Israel, Amazing Flex and Revelation on page 39 writes, And today, even among all Ebos, there is a big confusion between the two names, Ebo and Igbo, which must once again be made clear, as has been pointed out earlier, whereas Ebo, I mean, whereas Igbo is the name of the stubborn, aggressive, and a venturous cousin of, I cannot pronounce this word, but it's A-G-U-L-U-E-R-I, who was sacked from the kingdom of Erie because of his bad behavior and who ironically later became more successful than all his brothers. 
Igbo, on the other hand, is the corruption of the English word Hebrew, corrupted as Hebo, Ebo, and Igbo. The equivalent of the Jewish word Ibrik, or rather the English version of Ibrik, the Jewish name for the Israelites. Okay, so now with reading this paragraph alone, you begin to get an understanding of why we have these different words that they call us now and how these words were, were corrupted. Again, by holding on to these to talk, by, by holding to these to these derogatory names, we prove to you who we are. And it was shown that in, De in Deuteronomy chapter 28, we do fulfill these curses. And this is why I use the word Negroes more than um, African American, because when you go back in history with that word Negro, you can trace to who we really are and see how it fulfills Deut Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, another proper sign is the American slave post showing. And here in this sign, you can see the word Hebos, okay? And Hebrews actually is, is a word corruption of Hebrew. Okay. So it was in this sign, it say Hebrew slaves being sold. And you can take this time now to pause your screen to look at that. So instead of calling us Hebrew Israelites or Israelites or even Judeans, okay, they call us derogatory names such as Hebrews. Okay. And then later on, as time, it changed to Negroes. All right. Um, let's see. I'm gonna take this time. You can. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna take this time now to pause your screen. Well, I'm gonna read this again. Biblical scholar has always known that the original Jews, Negroes, have always been a dark-skinned people, even though the scriptures tell you this truth plainly. For example, King Solomon, who is from the tribe of Judah, while flirting with the daughters of Jerusalem, 10th century BCE, tells you that he's black. And they would they would use Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5 to 6. And take this time now to pause your screen to read that. Then it goes on to say that if you notice Solomon while describing his appearance, compare himself to the people of Kedar. Here is a definition of Kedar from an 1813 Smith Bible Dictionary. Okay. Let's read that. Kadar, black skinned, black skinned it, man, the second in order. Okay, so take this time now to pause your screen. And to also have a copy of the 1611. When you read Song of Solomon, you will learn that it's actually describing the Messiah and the bride, which is his church. Okay, let us continue and see what else he has. Take this time now to pause the screen to read that. That's other scriptures giving you proof that we was a people of dark skin. Okay. Now here's another one. Oh, it said, in fact, even the American government has always known that the so-called African Americans are the real house of Judah, Jews. In a White House memo dated Tuesday, January the 28th, 1969, to President, to President Nixon, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger described the Ebos as the wandering Jews of West Africa, gifted, aggressive, westernized, at best envied and resented, but mostly despised by their neighbors in the Federation. Foreign Relations Document, Volume E-5, Documents on Africa, 1969-1972. So if, even this particular resource here that you know, they're providing us, um, and the title of this resource is Africa's Gift to America, J.A. Roger. These first Africans were variously called Niger from River Niger, Nigra, Nigga, Ethiopian more Niger was pronounced not nigger but but nigger. I, I forgive my tongue if I mispronounce anything. So take this time now to pause the screen so that's more proof more proof on that. Okay. Now the next area I want to take you to is to Harry Rosenberg. Harry Rosenberg is a Jewish person who just recently last year came out and revealed to the world 
that we are the children of Israel. And this video will be listed in the video description box for you to um, look at. And I think it's also in the playlist as well. Okay. And the title of this video is African Americans are the children of Israel. Okay. So again, he is a Jewish person. He came out and acknowledged the fact that we are the children of Israel by DNA evidence. So that's a very interesting video. It's very short and straight to the point. Okay. And the last area we're going to go to is this one. But I want to read this question to you. I want you to think about it. Why do we not hear the term European Americans? Okay. Think about that as I read this preference to you. So we're going to go to this site here. There was a book written called From Negro to Black to African American, The Power of Names and Naming by um, Ben L. Martin, Political Science Quarterly. This is volume 106, number one, spring 1991, page 83 through 107. Take this time now to pause the screen, but now we're going to go to the preview. From Negro to Black to African American, the power of the power of names and naming. Ben L. Martin. In December 1988, news conference at Chicago Height Regency O'Hare Hotel, where leaders of 75 black groups met to discuss a new national black agenda. Jesse Jackson announced that members of their race prefer to be called African American. All right. This is what our so-called black leaders said. OK, keep that in mind. The campaign he I mean, the campaign he then led to replace the term black met met immediate success among African-American opinion makers and more gradually acceptance in the national press. Now, you want to pause here because, again, to be called black is like a, it's a, a derogatory term. Would you call, in other words, how are Europeans dressed today? Most of the time they're dressed by their nationality. Even the Japanese, the Chinese, even the people from India, they're dressed by their nationality. But we as a nation of people are dressed by a color or by derogatory names such as black, negro, nigger, and so forth. Think about it. Jackson, Jackson cultural offensive proposed an ethnic reference for a racial one, aiming thereby to help create as much as express a sense of ethnic identity among black Americans. So even then, my people were searching whom my people were searching who they are. OK. It recalled the successful imp imposition of black over Negro 20 years earlier and renew other things of the black power movement of the late 1960s. Okay. Names can be more than tags. They can, they can convey powerful imagery. So naming, proposing, imposing, and accepting names can be a political exercise. And the call for Blacks to be called African Americans were for more than a matter of speaking. Okay, so in other words, he's telling us it's for the political thing behind this. To be called African Americans has cultural integrity, Jackson said. It puts us in our proper, proper historical content. Every ethnic group in this country have a reference to some land base, some historical culture base. Now, he, now this one you want to highlight. When it said land base, every nationality that we speak of, you can find what country they came from. Now, when people look at us, they say Africa, but what people understand, Africa is just like America. I mean, well, just like, yeah, the, um, the, um, the, in other words, the continent of, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? You know how you have Canada and America and Mexico on the same land mass? Well, that's the same thing with Africa, but Africa has many countries within it. The same thing the way the European continent is. 
You have many countries within it, just like, you know, such as Germany, Italy, you have Russia, um, Spain, you know, think about it. Okay. So that last line, what it's saying that every nationality can tell you what country they came from, but we as a people cannot, that was taken away from us. So again, remember Africa is the name of a continent. Okay. That does not specify what country we came from, our origins. Let's let us continue to read. So let me see where I was at. I may be reading this again, but I'm gonna read it anyway. Um every every ethnic group in this country has a reference to some land base, some historical culture base. African Americans have hit the level of cultural mat maturity. There are there are Aramean Americans, Jewish Americans, uh, um, Arab Americans, and Italian Americans. And with a degree of accepted and reasonable pride, they connect their heritage to their mother country where they are now. Okay? But even now, even though they name all these different nationalities europeans think they are the original inhabitants of america and we know the history of that they stole that as well as many of the countries they don't went into and stole the land and colonized but you don't never see these uh, resources dressing them as european americans see they don't dress them as foreigners something to really think about so i want you to seek yahuwah Okay, seek him. Seek him out, my brothers and sisters. Because I know this information may be hard for you to believe, but the word do not lie. Get a copy of the King James 1611 Holy Bible. And the link of that Bible will be placed in the video description box so you can have on hand. That Bible has the truth. It has the precepts and the summary of the chapter to give you understanding. So now I close this video out with a prayer. I plead the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach, who is the Messiah and the son of Yahuwah. I plead the blood upon this video post and this link. I pray that anyone who listened to this message will un unharden their heart and receive it. I pray that even if you're not an Israelite, that you share this message with anyone that you know that is for the time has come for the Israelites to be awakened they have and they have a job to do and Yahuwah has um, is calling them I also pray for our enemies that they will that they will repent and turn from their evil ways and I pray and and for anything that I have not prayed for in this prayer father I ask that you fulfill it according to your will. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, who is the Messiah, so be it. So take this time, my brothers and sisters, to, to seek out Yahuwah. For you are the children of Israel. And you do fit the curses that are written in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And now we are coming into the season of where Yahuwah shall, shall restore you back to who you are. Please read Jeremiah chapter 30. And please take time to go through this video playlist titled Negro slash Israelites scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. For in this video, you will see some testimonies from my brothers and sisters to let you know what they experience in the countries they are living in. Also, you will see testimony of those who are um, who already know they are Israelites and who are testifying to you that you are Israelite, from the Ebos to the Bafarians, as well as many other videos that's in this um, playlist. And yes, the African Americans are the children. Israel video is in this playlist as well. Okay, so take this time to watch this playlist because it's going to answer many of your questions. It's also going to give you more historical proof as well, too, behind it. And also, please remember to share that second message with everyone. The second message is for Israelites and Gentiles, okay? 
All right, my family, I love you all. Continue to preach the gospel that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For we know this is the season for the Messiah to return, for we are in the seventh day of Adam. Make sure the people receive salvation as written in Romans chapter 10 and baptize them in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, who is the Messiah and the son of Yahuwah. Shalom. And that means peace be with you.